Once upon a time, there had to be a reason that a person became famous. Actors, musicians, athletes, generally people who found ways to entertain people without ever meeting them, became the celebrities. But, in present day, you can get famous for fucking anything. That's not always so bad. You can be a hilarious person on the news, put on a Chewbacca mask, eat hot dogs really fast. There are all sorts of new ways to get famous. But the most effective way seems to be being obnoxious and rich. And that brings me to the topic of today's episode. Marlins Man. Keith Olbermann once said that the worst people in sports are the people that criticize this guy. So I've never won anything for doing Browns memes. At least until today, because I am about to win the Keith Olbermann Award for being one of the worst people in sports. Because I am about to criticize the shit out of him. The issue is, if you follow sports, you have probably heard of this fucking guy. Marlins Man is literally quasi-famous for being an asshole who wears the most obnoxious, bright orange Marlins gear to any big game he feels like, gets seats where he can maximize his time on camera, making sure that he sticks out like a sore fucking thumb, and eventually a media person wants to talk to him, he plugs a few charities and acts like he's motherfucking Teresa or something. Now at first, Marlins Man was just a pimple on my ass. An eyesore while I'm trying to watch two teams I really don't care about play in a World Series game. My question was always, if this guy is a Marlins super fan, when the fuck does he ever go to Marlins games? But all of that changed last July. That pimple on my ass got infected. And quick. Marlins man was in Cleveland to watch Game 6 of the NBA Finals. A game in which the Cavs forced the first Game 7 for a major Cleveland sports team since the Indians forced Game 7 of the 1997 World Series. Against who? The Marlins. The Marlins tend to be a sore subject with Cleveland fans due to the fact that at the time of that series, the Indians were breaking decades of futility when they were literally the laughing stock of baseball. They hadn't won a World Series in decades, and then here comes the Marlins, a team that existed for about a half an hour and just went full Yankees on baseball and bought every big name they could find. And after all the weight and drama, an expansion rent a team came from behind in the bottom of the ninth inning to tie the game, and then eventually clinched the series in extra innings. Essentially losing the most important game in most of our lives in the worst fucking possible way. So yes, extreme salt. Especially when you factor in the Marlins were such a financial nightmare that season that the following year the team completely dismantled and lost 108 fucking games. And nor the Indians or any other team in Cleveland ever got that close. At least until the 2016 Cavs had a chance to take that sting away. So yes, it was a pretty tense day waiting for that Game 7. And if anyone should have understood that, it was a fucking Marlins man. So what does that fucking guy do? Well, he shows up at the fucking Indians game that day. So let's face it, this guy could have been taking a shit when the sewer explodes and not have worse timing than showing up at the stadium that day. And yes, people harassed his ass. And at first I felt bad. Hell, I even went as far as defending the prick on Twitter. Now, I would like to say by no means do I condone you going to a ball game and treating anyone like shit. Even some pompous attention whore like Marlins, man. And if you were part of that incident, you really should be ashamed of yourself. Because you are a fucking asshole. But at the same time, I thought to myself, what the fuck did that guy expect? Marlins man claimed to have been threatened by numerous fans, which as I said, really sucks. But this fucking guy played it up on social media like the stadium charged him with pitchforks and torches and were trying to burn the guy at the stake. He claimed that he couldn't find security or police and continued to chronicle his harrowing escape from the certain fucking doom that he faced in progressive field that day on social media. And at that point, I was wondering how in the fuck could he have found anybody with his head so far up his Twitter account's ass? I know if I'm in danger of physical harm from an angry mob, I would probably be sitting there rapid fire tweeting too. Plus, who the fuck wouldn't notice a guy in a fucking day glow orange getup being assaulted and try to intervene and help the guy? So while I don't doubt people were giving him shit, I call major bullshit on the degree to what Marlins man claimed his experience was. If people were really acting the way this fucking guy said, then why the fuck didn't he shut Twitter down for 30 seconds and record what the hell was going on so anyone out of line could have possibly been punished? I'm sure as much as I've seen this guy brag about how much he's loaded online, he isn't carrying around some burner fucking flip phone. 
But Marlins man continued to take shot after shot at Cleveland, to the point where it stopped sounding like the musings of an adult man, but instead the whinings of a spoiled fucking child. And like I said, the way this man has generalized and insulted this fan base as a whole, the only excuse for the shit that he has talked is if he is literally run out of the place by an angry mob. And I think that someone would have noticed that. But, after days about whining that people were getting pissed about his non-stop barrage on the fan base, and twisting people's words and actions, well, like some kind of shady lawyer, and using all of his social media pull to rally against the only time in history Marlins man was harassed. Boo fucking who, dude. Guess what? That's what the fuck happens when you are a goddamn attention whore. Especially with one with the graceful timing of a blown out tire on the way to fucking work. Some people just fucking suck, dude. And hell, you've even acknowledged that it may have been a fucking sensitive time for you to show up there that day. Hell, I only have 10,000 Twitter followers. You don't think there's people ready to jump my ass every time they think a joke sucks or... Or God forbid I use the wrong spelling of your for what context it's in. But Marlin's man finally got sick of the new kind of attention he had attracted to himself, and we were able to forget him. And he would never come back, right? Well, shit. Those Indians he claimed to haven't won a championship because we all suck just made it to the fucking World Series. And he likes the World Series the best. That's the best way to get himself on camera almost the entire time. And, well, at this point, he's actually a little nervous to set foot back in Cleveland. Hell, he's not a little nervous. When asked if he would be making an appearance in Cleveland, that cowardly fuck literally said it wasn't safe for him. Give me a fucking break. You can't tell me that after that fucking guy made a PR nightmare for the Indians, that the first time he walked back in there, he wouldn't have his hand held and his ass kissed the whole way through our stadium if he came back. And regardless, a simple fucking no would have sufficed, dude. Just no, but no. As if all of us in the Cleveland fan base don't already have our hands full enough for being generalized as being a bunch of racist buffoons for the cartoon character our team wears on their hats, that cocksmith decided to go on another rapid fire rant about the people in this town himself, sounding like a salty five-year-old who just had his ball taken away. All the while, a ton of Tribe fans try to take the moral high road and literally invite this son of a bitch to come back down here. Hell, I've seen people go as far as offering protection to the fucking guy. But does Marlins man even care? Hell no, just more shit talk, bullshit, and whining about the responses he gets for it. So fuck you, Marlins man. You can go to the NL Cities games if you really want to go to a World Series game. Many of us don't want you here. Many people who are much better people than myself tried to mend that bridge, and you insisted on pouring lighter fluid all over it again. So go ahead, blame this town for your own shit timing and your own asshole attitude. But just know that if you walked through those gates two days later, you would have received a hero's welcome and would have been amongst the happiest sports fans on this planet. But instead, you decided to be an ignorant, pansy douchebag, and guess what? Game 1 of the World Series now gets to go on without you. So how about in the future... If you want to be a well-respected public figure who is doing some good things in this world, why don't you remind us how good of a person you are? Because it seems like you're a hell of a lot more interested in reminding us how fucking wealthy and bitter you are instead. Sincerely, Brown's Memes Guy.